If COVID-19 uh, had knocked you down for a little while, you might have what is known as a glutathione deficiency. Well, a new review published recently by the American Chemical Society found that people with one or more chronic diseases who lack this powerful antioxidant are more likely to experience severe symptoms of the virus and, more tragically, even death. Uh, so what is glutathione and uh, how do we uh, try and keep on top of it? I'm joined by Coin Healthcare Pharmacist. It's uh, Julia Cruschiolo. Julia, morning to you. I had to learn how to say it properly, glutathione. What is it uh, and how do I know if I have a deficiency even before I have COVID-19? Hi, Gareth. Good morning. So basically, glutathione, it's called a tripeptide. In other words, it's, it's made of three amino acids, glycine, cysteine, and L-glutamine. And it's made naturally by the body in your liver. And why glutathione is so important in getting this press coverage is because it's a really, really important antioxidant. Now, I'm sure we've heard the term antioxidant many, many times. And basically what it does in the body, we have things called free radicals, which go around, they're very, very unstable, and they go around your body um, desperately trying to find other molecules to engage with so they can become more stable. And that is called oxidative stress. And if your body has high levels of oxidative stress, um, then you find that you are much more susceptible to infections. Your immune system is not functioning as well. You get older quicker. Your eyesight diminishes. You have more inflammation in your body. And you're much more prone to chronic diseases like diabetes, atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, and neurodegenerative disorders. And where glutathione comes in, um, Gareth, is that glutathione is a very, very powerful antioxidant. Mm. So it stabilizes the free radicals and makes them less reactive. So in that way, it actually protects your cells from damage, no matter what you're exposed to, whether it's pollution, bad food, emotional stress, or the COVID virus. So is glutathione, and I'm asking a very medically ignorant question, and I'm gonna, I can imagine viewers going, Gareth, how can you not know this? But I don't. So help me understand uh, the idiot that I am. Is glutathione, let's say I have a deficiency, which, uh, Julia, you can help me understand if I do. If I haven't been diagnosed, what signs am I looking for, A? And then B, is this something I can buy over a counter? Do I need to go for a test to see if I've got a deficiency in glutathione? Wonderful question, Gareth. So basically, uh, how you'd know that your glutathione levels are low is that you find um, you have a brain fog. You're often very, very tired. Um, you find that you have a lot of inflammation in your body. Your liver doesn't work so well. And so, in other words, um, uh, you find that, as I said, you're tired, you're much more prone to infections, and you age much more quickly. So you have more gray hair, eyesight's not so good, um, and you're much more prone to these chronic diseases that I've spoken of. Yeah. Um, so these are some of the signs. And yes, luckily, glutathione is actually made in the liver. We are exposed to a lot of factors in our environment mm -hmm. which cause oxidative stress. So the body needs some help, and sometimes our food isn't enough. We're talking about the dangers associated from this research uh, with a deficiency in glutathione and COVID-19. We have about a minute and a half left. Just help uh, me and viewers understand, what is that, what's this research saying and what's the connection? The connection they found is that people who have low glutathione levels are much more prone to severe symptoms of COVID-19, especially those that have to do with oxidative stress in the lungs. So they are finding that if people have low levels of glutathione, they tend to get much more severe lung damage, which leads to uh, you know, a respiratory distress disorder and this long haul COVID. In other words, where your symptoms linger mm. for weeks and months on end. And mainly it's because of the lung damage. So if you up your glutathione levels, you are much less likely to have those very severe symptoms of COVID. So it keeps you more protected and also protects the lungs especially from oxidative stress. That's the connection, Gareth. Uh, Julia, it's always such a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for your time. Julia uh, Criscolo, Coin Healthcare Pharmacist, uh, joining us. We are so blessed and lucky that we are able to hear directly from the inventor of LifeWave Technologies. Uh, we're going to be talking about an extremely important subject, 
And I think very importantly, this is going to provide people with information on something they can implement today in their daily life uh, that can have some pretty profound effects. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. So let's dive in. I know we have a lot we want to cover today. So I'm going to just start uh, talking through some of these questions that I know many of us have. But, you know, right now in the world, you know, with general health and wellness and keeping our immune system strong, it really seems to be on everyone's mind. We have so many unanswered questions and a lot of uncertainty. And so many of us are really focusing on what we can do to avoid getting sick, you know. And one of the one of the strategies that's shared a lot um, in all avenues of health, but especially right now, um, is that we really should focus on keeping our immune system strong. And uh, you know, I guess the first question that would come to my mind when I hear that is, okay, great. So what exactly is our immune system, right? I know that seems like a simple question, but what is it? <laughs> sure. So the immune system, and there's several facets to it, is basically what protects our body from illness, right? So this is pretty simple to understand. And the immune system is layered uh, so that we have several different degrees of protection. And some of the functions of the immune system are a little bit surprising in a way uh, because they produce reactions that we might normally think of as being harmful, but they're actually uh, quite necessary. So, for example, uh, some of the biochemistry in the immune system is the release of oxidative uh, radicals, and they're there to suppress uh, bacterial infections, viral infections, cancer cells. And if this oxidative stress is allowed to perpetuate, if we don't have our antioxidant system in balance, it can damage healthy tissue. But uh, when we're injured, the immune system kicks into gear. We get a release of oxidative chemicals to suppress bacteria so we don't get an infection. And then uh, these act as signaling molecules to bring in inflammation and attract in the stem cells so we can start tearing down uh, damaged tissue and begin the process of building up new tissue. Um, you know, there is uh, a line of science that I follow which is that you know science and God don't have to be separate. They can coexist, meaning that there is a uh, inherent beauty in the design of our immune system and our bodies as a whole. Uh, like for example, many people don't know that inside of our cells are molecular motors. And the motors inside the mitochondria spin at eight or 9,000 RPM, just like a turbine. And this happens through a sequence of uh, proteins. So uh, this is something that is absolutely masterful. And I like to think about it as I read more and, and learn more about it, that this is a fingerprint uh, that God left behind, that this is something that could not have happened by accident. But in any case, as we look at immune function, Basically, uh, we want to be looking at a balance between oxidative radicals, inflammation, and antioxidants so we can keep the system balanced and uh, push down the activity of things that can harm us, like viruses, and protect our cells in the process. Wow, it sounds like there's actually a lot happening when it comes to what our immune system is doing. And like you were saying, it might seem backwards to some of us, right? We hear about what is oxidative stress and that it's bad, right? So I, what I'm hearing from you, though, it's, it's really the balance of certain things within your body that's keeping that immune system functioning and, and keeping your body healthy. Am I, am I getting that right? The balance is actually quite extraordinary. Uh, one of the uh, first speakers that we had at our 2005 conference in Las Vegas. It was our very first network marketing conference as a company. We started in late 2004, so this was later in 2005. And one of our speakers was Dr. Frank Schallenberger, who's a medical doctor and uh, the expert on ozone therapy. And Ozone is a uh, is made of three molecules of oxygen, and it can be used therapeutically uh, in cancer therapy and uh, uh, trying to suppress viral activity in the body. 
So as an oxygen radical, one of the things that Dr. Schallenberger found clinically uh, that is a little bit counterintuitive is that he could give people ozone therapy and intravenous glutathione at the same time, and they wouldn't neutralize one another. So the thought was you give oxygen and an antioxidant at the same time, they're just going to cancel one another out. But that's actually in reality, not what happens. The two coexist, they work in balance, and they bring up the immune system simultaneously. So this whole idea about keeping the body in balance between the yin and the yang, the positives and the negatives, it all it all works beautifully. Wow, that's incredible. I know we're going to talk a little bit about glutathione in a little bit. Um, so yeah. I'm excited to hear a little bit more about that. But I, you know, I've never heard it put that way, you know, the oxygen and then the antioxidant, right? That's that's an interesting connection that I've never made before. That's really great. Yeah. So when we're looking at, you know, today, people, of course, are very concerned about COVID, rightfully so. And uh, I I find it um, a little bit disingenuous for some of the health experts uh, here in the U.S. and other places saying, well, the only way out of the pandemic is through vaccination. That's highly disingenuous from a scientific perspective, because uh, the human race has been dealing with viruses since the creation, right? And so our immune systems are perfectly capable of responding and dealing with viral infections. Uh, you know, the question here is, of course, you can have people that are a little bit more predisposed to some of the uh, adverse effects. And of course, we know that in the case of COVID, which we shouldn't take lightly, uh, some people, a very, very small percentage of the population uh, are at a high risk of dying of this viral infection. So the question is, you know, what can we do to protect ourselves? Well, uh, what we absolutely know now is that we can use our body's own immune function to dramatically reduce the risks of serious side effects from COVID. So for example, you know, we were in lockdown globally and this was uh, not such a good thing, right? On a, on a whole bunch of different levels. We should be going outside, getting our vitamin D because over 86% of the people that die from COVID have vitamin D deficiencies. And vitamin D, not surprisingly, plays a role in modulating immune function. Uh, subsequent studies, they also found that taking an NAC supplement, which is a precursor to glutathione, could prevent and cure COVID-19, all without vaccinations or without drugs. So this is, I'm not saying that people should use this in instead of vaccination or proper medical care, but what, I'm, what I am saying is that being proactive and doing things like watching weight, getting adequate sleep, drinking a, a proper amounts of water, proper nutrition, and supplementing with things like vitamin D and NAC, supporting the natural antioxidant and immune system, uh, we can dramatically reduce our risks and support our overall health. I love that perspective. I think that's exactly what people have been talking about is like having a strong, healthy immune system that can support our body's natural functions are just critical because there, there, there's a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of people who are concerned and scared. And so from my perspective, I love that our approach here is that we can be empowered to take care of our own bodies through some natural and holistic approaches that we we certainly can, like you said, use what we naturally have been doing from the beginning of time, which is to protect our overall health through a healthy, strong immune system. It, it, it's even more important now than ever, wouldn't you say? Well, absolutely. And you know, if we turn to nature for some examples and also for answers, we find some things that are both surprising and extraordinarily helpful. It, it's critically important that we all take up study of nature. For example, uh, one of the things that is surprising is that we find compounds in nature that contain hormones. So for example, pine pollen uh, contains hormones that 
that uh, are identical to what we would find in the human body. So people use compounds like pine pollen for boosting testosterone levels, for example. Uh, we don't need to have drugs as a uh, for testosterone replacement. We get them in nature. We find antiviral compounds like garlic, uh, like oregano oil, olive leaf extract. All of these things are highly powerful natural antiviral compounds. Even in garlic, there's an extract called germanium sesquioxide. And I have to slow down a little bit here for translation, but there's a, an extract in garlic that prevents cancer cells from reproducing. And uh, I've met uh, medical doctors using this extract with other things for naturally treating cancer. So the bottom line is that there are many natural compounds that people can use to support immune function. They're safe. They have, are very low risk for side effects. And in many cases, they can enhance uh, our overall health in remarkable ways. I love that. I think especially now, it's so important that we do feel empowered and know that there are alternatives for all of us to support that healthy immune system. And as we've been talking about, it's more important now than ever to be paying attention to that. And so I do have a question for you. Um, just, I think it's important that everyone knows that there are maybe signals or triggers or things to look out for that might help you to identify and then working with your with your doctor that maybe your immune system isn't functioning at optimal levels. Is there anything that you can help us know about that we should be looking for that could tell us that our immune system's doing great or maybe our immune system isn't working as well as it ought to? Sure. So first, I would encourage people to get blood tests at least once per year. Twice per year is better, but at least once per year. And uh, you want to get an organic acid test, which is going to show how is your body making energy. Uh, and it's going to see if there's any biochemical holes in that process uh, where they could be corrected through nutrition and supplementation. And then also a uh, panel looking at inflammatory markers. So if people have elevated levels of homocysteine, that's a red flag. That could mean that they are at risk for heart attack. If they have elevated levels of lipid peroxide, uh, inflammatory cytokines, these could be signals for other things. So knowing if there's elevated levels of inflammation, this could be an indication the immune system is not doing its job. Um, we would also want to look at uh, hormone panels. Uh, it's you know, important to know that hormones are going to change with age. But again, there are things that we can do naturally to augment, um, augment our diet and keep things like cholesterol under control, keep for men, keep testosterone levels elevated without drugs. So getting uh, working with a healthcare practitioner, getting blood tests uh, to put us in a ballpark of what's going on, that's really important. So another thing is when people aren't getting, they're falling out of sleep patterns, all right? We can't, can't underestimate the value of a good night's sleep. If people start to get less than six hours of sleep, and I'd recommend people shoot for seven, um, this is going to be a warning sign that they could be headed towards a problem with their immune system. Um, another thing people, of course, uh, they want to look at is general state of fatigue. So if people are experiencing, you know, a lull, let's say in the afternoon, that could be kind of normal. But if they find that they're barely getting through the day, that could be an issue. They may want to have their uh, use what's called an oximeter. They could get this from their healthcare practitioner and uh, check blood saturation of oxygen. That could be an indicator of uh, what's going on with the, uh, with the immune system. And there are other diagnostic techniques. There's some really interesting bioelectrical products that are out today for measuring the function of the immune response. But it's important that this is uh, something that people do regularly in terms of monitoring their health, because if we keep our immune system optimized, we can hopefully prevent disease uh, later on in life. 
I appreciate you sharing with us some of the things that we can be looking for. And I also appreciate that you're encouraging us to get tested on a frequent basis, because I think sometimes people can learn to live with something they're experiencing, or maybe just don't know that something that's been going on is actually an indicator that something's not functioning right. And I think it's so important um, for everyone, like we've talked about, to have that optimal functioning immune system for a myriad of reasons, but especially for what's going on right now in the world. So I think that's great um, that people can, yeah. can have, be empowered again, but working with their medical doctor to really help them understand their health. That's great. Absolutely. And I think it's kind of a normal reaction that many people, they don't want to go to the doctor. They're scared of what they're going to find. I had a conversation with my son this morning. We have a new piece of equipment that we got into the lab and we're using it to measure mitochondrial function as part of our overall research into age reversal. So I said to him, oh, after you get this set up, go ahead and run a scan on yourself and take a look at the results. He's like, Oh, I don't know. I'm scared. I don't know if I want to see what, you know, results are. And this is a, uh, you know, young, healthy uh, guy that, you know, weight lifts, uh, you know, five or six days a week. So <laughs> not overweight in great <laughs> physical shape, but so I think the mindset and the idea of that we may get a result back. We don't want to hear uh, you know, the way that we should look at this is, okay, we want to know well in advance if we're heading in a direction that's not so good, so we can implement things uh, that will improve our health. And they can be natural. Doesn't mean we have to go for surgery or drugs. Uh, if you work with a good medical doctor, that's uh, preferably a clinical nutritionist or good healthcare practitioner, They'll, ma they'll uh, make recommendations on changes in lifestyle and supplementation uh, to get people going in the right direction before it becomes a bigger problem. Well, I think what I'm hearing you say is that we need to be informed. We need to understand what's happening in our bodies because we can't impact change. We can't affect our bodies through some of these techniques, through some of these things, if we don't actually know what we're working with, correct? Absolutely. And what so yeah, diagnostics is going to be absolutely important. And then what happens next is instead of, you know, there's a lot of good psychological work that's been done on this, instead of, you know, reacting with anger or or being scared, uh, reacting with fear, which are really normal reactions, um, if we can move to the phase of acceptance where we say, okay, I've I've got this issue. And let's go ahead and form an action plan so we can address it. Um, as I experiment with uh, optimizing testosterone levels, some of the things I experiment with, uh, I'll do regular blood tests and I'll experiment with the amount of saturated fat in my diet because saturated fat is going to convert over to cholesterol and then that's going to uh, cause increases in testosterone. I got a little carried away and my cholesterol spiked over 300 and my doctor kind of panicked. He's like, what's going on here? And, uh, you know, we have to come up with a plan, you know, for addressing this. I said, it's okay. I know what's going on. I'll deal with it. I started taking uh, olive oil, uh, extra virgin organic olive oil. Three weeks later, my cholesterol levels were back to normal. Uh, no drugs necessary, no other type of intervention. And uh, these, these things are there, they're natural, safe, and offer all kinds of benefits. So anyway, don't panic, accept it, come up with an action plan, and uh, everything's fine. Oh, I love that. You know, speaking, speaking of action plans, um, I, I would really like to dive in with you a little bit uh, surrounding what I consider to be like a buzzword, a word that I've been hearing since I was a little kid and it was kind of like a new thing when I was younger. And I still think that there's a lot of confusion around this particular word. I know you talk about it a lot, so a lot of our members are probably pretty familiar. But for those that aren't, I'd really like for us to talk about antioxidants, like you were mentioning earlier, like what are they and how do they work? Okay. So antioxidants, this is a uh, method for, these are biochemicals that protect the body from damage. And back in maybe the seventies or so, uh, antioxidants were being looked at as maybe some of the premier molecules for anti-aging and maybe even 
age reversal. Today, we know that this isn't exactly the case, but they do serve a very, very important role in the body. And uh, if we took an antioxidant like glutathione, uh, glutathione is a tripeptide and it's made of three amino acids. Um, the most important amino acid is cysteine. Uh, so the amount of cysteine you have in your body is going to limit uh, the total amount of glutathione that your body can make. So glutathione is ubiquitous. It's the body's master antioxidant. It's found nearly everywhere. And its role is to uh, help suppress inflammation and oxidative stress and uh, protect the DNA and the cell from damage. The while anti, uh, glutathione is an antioxidant that's broad spectrum in the sense that it's found everywhere, there's other antioxidants that are a little bit more specialized. Um, so you have coenzyme Q10, which is uh, generally associated with the health of the heart. Um, you could have things like vitamin E, uh, which show up in specialized tissue, vitamin A, um, for men, again, that are looking to elevate testosterone, they want to keep their vitamin A levels high. Uh, we have carnosine, which, of course, we've done a lot of research on, which, again, is more of a specialized antioxidant that's found in the muscle, the heart, and the brain. But the, the bottom line is that this is a bioelectrical phenomena. In other words, glutathione as an antioxidant uh, ha is held together with electrons that are produced during energy production, uh, during that cycle. So you find a lot of glutathione in the cell and it plays a very, very interesting role in, um, in anti-aging and other effects, uh, but it's held together uh, by energy, by electrons that are produced uh, in, the, in the mitochondria and can recycle other antioxidants like vitamin C by sharing its electrons. So this is important because often we think well, the body is a collection of biochemicals, and that's true, but the body is a lot more than that. We are energetic beings, and we have uh, electrical and electromagnetic uh, fields in the body, and these play a critical role in our overall health and optimizing health. Wow, I really appreciate that overview of how these actually work. It does spark another question for me. I think I might know the answer, but I, I bet you can answer it more definitively. So you were talking about how we have all these antioxidants in the body or that we can supplement or consume them through different foods or whatever. But do, do our bodies naturally produce these antioxidants on their own? And, and so why would we need to supplement if we do? I, I'm kind of confused about that. Sure. So the body does uh, produce its own antioxidants, uh, but we also get we also get antioxidants in our food. And as we age, the levels of antioxidants in the body begin to decline. So if we were to use uh, glutathione as an example, we have to get cysteine and glycine in our diet in order to make the glutathione. Uh, cysteine is particularly important uh, because it's going to be found in things like uh, dairy products. Uh, you find a lot of cysteine in eggs and in, uh, in milk protein. So if people are vegans, they're probably going to want to supplement uh, with a cysteine supplement to make sure that they're, they're getting enough cysteine. Um, but in any case, the, because the energy production in the cell will decline with age, that means the pool of resources for being able to make antioxidants declines. So this is where supplementation becomes important. In our case, with our technology, we're approaching it a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna use light to stimulate the production of glutathione, increase glutathione levels and keep them elevated. And um, it is incredibly effective. Uh, I have a study that we're going to show here a little bit later, but if people were to take glutathione pills, maybe they're getting between a 10% to 40% increase in glutathione over a period of about a month, and we can increase glutathione levels well over 200%, some cases over 400% uh, in as little as 24 hours. So we, we've got a very novel way 
of elevating uh, glutathione and other antioxidants. Wow. That is pretty incredible because I, I do have some questions for you about that in a little bit because I am really curious about how how our patch works versus supplementing, but I'll get to those in a minute. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about oxidative stress and how that's a part of our immune system, but we we hear so much about oxidative stress and carcinogens and all of these things that can wreak havoc on our cells, which in turn can really cause problems for us. So talk to us a little bit more about that. So when and how is it unhealthy? When is it healthy to be in our body? And what's actually happening in the cell with this oxidative stress that's part of our immune system? Yeah. So first thing to know is that, of course, there's going to be foreign chemicals in the environment, in our food, that are going to act as radicals uh, for damaging healthy tissue. So when we're talking about any type of oxidative stress, or, uh, or biochemical stress, we want to separate out things that uh, man-made chemicals, synthetics that can damage the body versus uh, biochemicals that are there naturally. Mm. So as an example, uh, the immune system will release oxygen radicals. So this could be the hydroxyl ion, this could be a superoxide radical, uh, ozone, peroxide, these oxygen radicals, they're naturally occurring and they're extraordinarily powerful. So if it wasn't for our antioxidant system, our oxygen radicals would actually overwhelm our body and we wouldn't live very long. Mm. So uh, looking under the microscope is incredibly interesting. Uh, for example, if you see an increase in, sup in the superoxide radical, it looks when it comes in contact with a virus, it looks like a stick of dynamite went off and there's a, this big gigantic explosion and the virus is dead. Uh, so these <laughs> these oxygen radicals are not to be trifled with. They, <laughs> they are very, very powerful. So uh, we have uh, in that case, in the case of superoxide, we have a uh, antioxidant SOD, which will neutralize uh, the superoxide radical and keep it under control. But the oxidative stress is, is very important and shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, so let's say that someone is currently suffering with a disease like cancer, and a, they go to an oncologist, and the oncologist says, well, we want to put you on surgery, uh, we want to put you through chemotherapy, and that's how we're going to address this. So I would encourage uh, this person to seek another opinion not that they shouldn't follow the advice of that doctor, but talk to another doctor about a natural therapy. So in other words, when someone has cancer, it's, it's an opportunistic disease. And this means that normally cancer cells appear in the body. And when the immune system is functioning properly, it's the oxygen radicals that are going to destroy those cancer cells before they have an opportunity to replicate and form a tumor. So it's very easy to understand that when a person's immune system has been compromised, maybe it's through poor diet, lack of exercise, neglect, emotional stress, could be anything, that now that the immune system is not doing its job, the antioxidant and the uh, oxidative system is out of balance, and now these cancer cells can form. Well, instead of getting the surgery and the chemo, why not speak with a doctor about getting an oxygen therapy? So taking things like hydrogen peroxide or ozone, balancing out with IVs of glutathione and vitamin C, this is going to be naturally supportive to immune function and um, works extraordinarily well. I love that. So as you were talking about that, it kind of made me think that what we're trying to do with the therapies that you're talking about are these, these techniques. It's to raise the levels of both because when they're together, that's when they really get rid of the bad stuff that's in our body. Did I get that right? We want to keep everything in balance. So in the case, and it's also in the case of cancer, it's going to depend, of course, what stage someone is at. If you catch something early on, uh, it can be a lot easier to correct and then, of course, later on, if someone goes stage four. But in any case, the idea is you introduce the ozone 
which is naturally produced by the immune system. So the ozone acts as augmentation for the immune function. So we're giving people something that the immune system would produce anyway. And then uh, an IV of glutathione or vitamin C to help uh, prevent the ozone from damaging healthy tissue. Uh, interestingly enough, I've heard medical doctors say that when they give people ozone, their glutathione levels go up in mm. response. And this is easy to understand because oxygen radicals are signaling molecules. And when our immune system is going to produce uh, oxidative radicals for destroying viruses and cancer cells, that triggers the uh, cell to upregulate glutathione in response to that stress. This is something that I look at from the point of view of age reversal, because there are these negative feedback mechanisms. And when we want to reverse the age of the cell, we have to look to compensate about what's happening in the cell between the oxygen and uh, uh, antioxidant balance. Uh, some very interesting work there I'll be disclosing in the future. Well, I can't wait to hear it. It's always <laughs> great to hear what you're working on and the research and the things that, that you learn. And, you know, as I'm just listening to you, I'm like, wow, you know, I definitely took a lot of biology classes in college, but my goodness, I still feel like some of these things are, are really hard to understand. So I think what is important for all of us to know is that it's really important that we are making sure that we get the right things into our body, whether it's through supplementing or by using our patches to help raise some of these important things that we know through the data, through the research that's been done, this can really help to strengthen that immune function. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the glutathione. You know, we've talked about how you can consume it and there are other antioxidants that you can consume. And, and if you can briefly just share with us, what is, the, what is the main difference between consuming something and having it be produced in our bodies through a patch is there a difference in the effectiveness of that antioxidant in those two capacities? Does the digestive system get in the way at all? Well, okay. So first, if people were to take, a, with, with glutathione, there's a couple of options. But one thing to understand is the half-life of glutathione. So let's say someone were to go into a clinic and they get an IV of glutathione. They can get a massive dose, but about an hour later, the glutathione levels are back to normal. And this is because glutathione degrades. It's got a half-life of seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's there and then it's gone. And the same would be true with supplementation. Uh, most people, you know, statistically, they take supplements once per day. A uh, smaller percentage, maybe 15% of the population may take supplements twice per day. Um, but the issue is still the same. The antioxidant levels, they will go up over time, but generally they'll spike, they'll go up and then back down. So it takes a long time uh, to build up the glutathione levels that way. Uh, the patch is very, very different. The patch, we're stimulating the skin with low levels of light and communicating to the cell, elevate the glutathione. So, this is like a time release supplement. That's one way to think about it. And because the cell is getting the signal, elevate glutathione, we can elevate glutathione very rapidly and keep those levels elevated. And that's exactly what our studies show. I love that. You know, as you were talking about those the, the levels deteriorate pretty quickly, but this is like a constant, right? It's that constant signaling to keep those levels higher for a continuous amount of time while you're wearing the patch, even though you're not really, you're not actually absorbing anything. It's your body producing it, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is, uh, you know, kind of a healthy marriage between biophysics and uh, biochemistry. So if people have a healthy diet, they, they're getting adequate amounts of protein, healthy fats, vitamins and minerals, getting hydrated. If, they, if they've got the sources of those raw materials in their diet, then the patch can work uh, beautifully to keep those glutathione levels elevated. If people have a poor diet, uh, they should not expect to get the best effects out of the patch. I appreciate you bringing that up. That's something that you share on most of our webinars is that the patches are these powerful tools for health, 
But if you're not taking care of your body on the basic level on, on a broad spectrum, they're not going to be as effective. I know you talk about, uh, like you did earlier, the sleep and the water and the nutrition and moving our bodies and being in the sunlight. And I really appreciate that you bring that up frequently because I think sometimes people forget that. Yeah, and it is a matter of you know coming up with a plan and not leaving it up to chance. So most of us, you know, we'd like to stay young and healthy throughout our life and that's certainly our goal as a company to give people technology where that's possible. Uh, but it's attention to detail, right? So you could think of a car that you buy a car and it's new and if you take care of it, you can have it for many many years. But if you don't put in clean oil, if you don't put in air filters from time to time, don't get the brakes done, the car is going to degenerate quickly. So the same is true with our bodies. If we're getting adequate amounts of sleep, getting proper nutrition on a day-to-day -day basis, hydrating, exercising regularly, avoiding things that aren't so good for us, uh, you know, having a positive, healthy, emotional mindset, uh, Certainly, uh, I'm a Christian, so I'm going to focus on spirituality. You know, all of these things in balance uh, are so very important. And that way, in the big picture, uh, five years, 10 years go by, you've had a lifestyle that is uh, that's going to promote longevity and health. So it's really the day-to-day the -day attention of these things is so critically important. Yeah, I'm hearing that, that, that attention to detail, that balance approach in everything. That's how our bodies are built, right? That balance. So it's important that we're impacting all those areas. Before we move on, though, um, I did want to see if you'd be willing to share some information about some of the studies that have been done uh, specifically with our glutathione patch. I know that sure. a lot of people might not be familiar with that. So if you could share some of those findings, that'd be great. Oh, uh, sure. There's some really interesting things here. Um, I'd like, if it's okay with you, Emily, I want to cover just a couple of things because after this webinar, people might go on the uh, internet, do some searches on glutathione. And uh, here's one from Medical News Today. Um, I want to make it clear that when we're talking about our patch elevating glutathione, we talk about it in terms of general wellness, supporting overall health. Uh, and uh, acting as for detoxification, there's certainly going to be many, many other health benefits of glutathione that we don't make claims about. Uh, so for our distributors, we want them to stick with uh, health and wellness claims. Uh, one thing interesting here, uh, again, I'm a little biased because I'm a man, uh, but there's some interesting studies that show by elevating glutathione, we can preserve our testosterone levels and even protect the quality of the sperm. So uh, couples that are interested in, in having a baby can benefit from elevated levels of glutathione. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention here, for those people that are so interested, we think of glutathione as protecting the cells from damage. Uh, acting at detoxification. It's, it's uh, found in high concentrations in the liver. But this is a really interesting article. It was uh, published in Integrative Medicine. And for those that are interested in going into the nitty gritty detail about the biochemistry of glutathione, uh, this is a, a pretty good article. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to, uh, to bring up here, since we don't often speak about it, is some of the other roles that glutathione participates in. Uh, one, for example, is um, its role in the mitochondria and also protecting DNA. So for example, um, glutathione has the really interesting ability to protect DNA from damage and also even repairing DNA. So let's say that uh, someone was out in the sun too much and um, their cells were exposed to UV light and the DNA was damaged. If glutathione levels are low, then those cells can uh, mutate into cancer cells. 
However, if glutathione levels are elevated, that DNA can become repaired before the cells divide. So those are some really interesting and, and sometimes surprising uh, benefits of glutathione. And then finally, um, since we've been talking about health and fitness recently, uh, we want to encourage people to come to our November convention. Um, way, way back in 2006, I got an opportunity to make a presentation uh, down at Army Aeromedical in uh, Fort Rucker. Uh, and they were Army Aeromedical uh, in the US, they were researching the role of glutathione in improving athletic performance in uh, members of the armed forces. And what they found was that by elevating glutathione, they could uh, dramatically improve athletic performance. And so what the army had planned was, I think by 2021 to 2025, all active military personnel would be taking a glutathione supplement. So US military is convinced glutathione is extraordinarily valuable. But now getting on to your question, uh, if we go to the science section of the website, uh, we just simply go to products and then click on science, you're gonna be able to find uh, clinical studies that we have on all of our products, including glutathione. So this is one uh, that we did back in 2010 with uh, Dr. Lisa Tully. Uh, she's a pharmacologist. And we did several studies actually looking at how the glutathione patch elevates glutathione. And what was found here, I'm gonna skip down towards the bottom. So sorry about this here, discussion. Uh, here, this was pretty extraordinary. Uh, we saw instances where glutathione levels went up 264%, but in some cases, glutathione levels went up as high as 454%. Uh, we saw other studies that duplicated this where the average increase after 24 hours was over 300%. Uh, that's extraordinary when you consider that a glutathione pill needs about 30 days to increase glutathione by only 14%. So this also explains why people wear the glutathione patch and get very, very rapid detox effects. Now, I pulled up this study, and this is an oldie but a goodie, uh, and we're not going to make any claims about this because it would be a medical claim. But uh, we did this study looking at the use of our glutathione patch with a homeopathic spray. And we were thinking about marketing this as a treatment for acne uh, because we can't make a medical claim with the glutathione patch. We thought, okay, we'll make the medical claim with the homeopathic spray. But eventually the uh, attorneys, they shot this down. So. But if you want to, uh, if you want to look at the study for yourself, it's up over here, and you'll see it was performed by Essex testing. So I want to skip down to section ten, uh, where it talks about the results uh, because they're really fun. So when we go down here, uh, we can see that number one, we hit statistical significance. We're able to reduce levels of acne, but Check this out. The greatest improvement occurred after four weeks where there was a 93% reduction in acne. Uh, we saw 68% reduction after two weeks. And as I recall, it was an 86% reduction after uh, three weeks. But after a month, over 93% reduction in acne with no side effects. So certainly this is showing a correlation between overall health of the skin and levels of glutathione. So that kind of begs the question, if uh, we can elevate glutathione rapidly and it will improve the health of the skin, what else is going on? Funny you should ask. 
Uh, <laughs> here we did a study with uh, Dr. Homer Nazaran and Dr. Sherry Blake Greenberg. Uh, Dr. Nazaran at the time was uh, at the University of Texas in El Paso. Uh, he's since retired and um, he was doing biomedical uh, research. And what we did was we used a technique called electro-interstitial scanning to measure the function of the organs in the body. And we wanted to find out what's going to happen after a month of using the glutathione patch uh, for 12 hours a day. And you can see right over here in this section, we hit statistical significance. And there were significant improvements in the pancreas, liver, gallbladder, et cetera, uh, to statistical significance by using the glutathione patch. So basically what we found was that after a, a month of using the glutathione patch, it would improve the bioelectrical function of all of the organs in the body. And then finally, you know, that's a look at the biochemistry, but what happens since we, this product, since it's improving the electrical properties of the body, is can we measure any changes in the uh, bioelectrical field? And so for this, we worked with Dr. Thornton Streeter. Uh, we did several studies with him in India. And uh, this is a study, again, that's posted on our website uh, using the uh, glutathione patch and using uh, different types of measure measurement techniques. One is called gas discharge visualization, where we look at the uh, electrical field or bioelectrical field around the body, and people can go through this at their leisure. But basically, uh, you know, what we're going to see after using the glutathione patch are improvements in the bioelectrical field. So this is all to say that you use the glutathione patch, it elevates glutathione rapidly, it'll detoxify the body of uh, foreign toxins, helps to support immune function. And over a period of four weeks, uh, this can do things like support the overall health and function of the organs and um, even the bioelectrical system that is responsible for communications in our body, uh, even that improves with the glutathione patch. Wow. No wonder they call it the master antioxidant. It does everything. It does a lot. <laughs> it does a lot. Yep. So David, I, I know we're, we're pretty much out of time here. Um, and I really appreciate you sharing um, the research that you've recently done and also the studies. I, I would love to ask you though, uh, for especially for our new people here, why is having this data? Why are these studies and research so much a core of what LifeWave is? And why for you personally, is it important for us to have these before we release a product to our field? Well, you know, I suppose uh, we could ask people uh, to take our word for it or just believe on faith, um, but that's really not good enough, right? So we like to see, is there scientific evidence to support that these products work? And we have over 80 clinical studies. So, and many of those studies are published and you can go to the website and get those. And so what we want people to know that uh, people that are our customers, that when we make a claim about what the product does, the reason why we make that claim is that there's a clinical study that says this is what we found. When uh, we have distributors who are going to take their valuable time and they're going to say, I want to build a business with this company, uh, either part time or full time. They can have the confidence in knowing that we've invested millions of dollars in research to have these products independently validated that they do what we say. So when we say we have a patch to elevate glutathione, we can go to the study done by Lisa Tully or Melinda Connor or others, and we can say, here's the evidence that the patch elevates glutathione. So uh, it's, it's very important that there is uh, evidence in the, in the uh, framework of double blind and pilot studies to show, yeah, these patches work, they do what we say. 
Well, I love that you're committed to that. And I know we have so many amazing testimonials for all of our products or all of the products that you've invented, but I'm, I'm with you. I think it's so great that we have all of this evidence, real evidence that proves that what we say is happening is happening. And I'm very grateful for that. I know many of our members are as well. And, and one thing I think is that makes this even more special is none of our members have to be a scientist or a doctor or an expert like you. We can come and listen to you and be in awe because we're like, wow, he understands this more than any of us. But I think it's wonderful that our members can reference these studies and they can share, like you said, with confidence and basically just say, I know it supports the immune system function, right? I mean, that's just a great thing that our members can say without having to be an expert. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's always going to be skeptics out there. And uh, I think, you know, being skeptical about things can be healthy. Uh, It can be healthy as long as it doesn't blind us uh, or we don't have our belief systems, which can hold us back. Uh, You know, many times in science, uh, people hold on to a specific belief system and they say, well, this is the way things are because this is what I learned. And if I, if something uh, comes up that I can't explain, I push it off to the side because it doesn't fit into my belief system. That's very dangerous in science because there's always so many things for us to learn. You know, Stephen Hawking, who is, you know, one of the great minds of our time, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, he always maintained that the universe was created through the Big Bang and it led to kind of the cosmology uh, that is being studied. Uh, But the more that he studied the universe, he came to the conclusion there must be a God outside of time and space that orchestrated all of this because there's too much order uh, that exists. It couldn't possibly have just all come from chaos. So it's it's very interesting to me that uh, that a pure scientist like that, someone this famous uh, who spent his life uh, devoted to this, would eventually come to that conclusion. So, of course, my specialty is in biology. And the more that I look at the workings of the cell and the magnificence of what happens in the cell, especially the mitochondria, uh, the more I'm convinced that's the fingerprint of God and that this was not some random evolutionary event, that this was indeed created. And by studying uh, human biology and the world around us, we can benefit in some truly magnificent ways. So I hope my contribution is going to be age reversal. Um, But in any case, uh, I'm I'm really grateful that people were here today uh, to give an opportunity to listen to uh, what you and I have presented. Well, I'm with you, David, and I appreciate you sharing that perspective. You're right. It's good for us to question things, and it's good for us to be open to changing our minds when we have evidence that shows us what's right, what's real, right? So thank you. I I personally am very grateful for the technology that you have invented and shared with us, and I am grateful for the research that shows that what I've experienced is actually happening. So thank you. And uh, any last uh, thoughts or words you want to share with us before we finish up this webinar? Yeah, first, you know, I want to thank uh, all of our members of our LifeWave community for uh, giving us the opportunity to be here and uh, being supportive of what it is that we're doing and allowing us uh, to have the opportunity to continue to research the technology and other technologies which are going to lead to products to benefit uh, all of humanity. You know, that's really the goal here. I think we have the opportunity to change the world for better uh, in some pretty dramatic ways. And certainly in in these uh, very troubling times, uh, we could use that. So um, I hope people will come to our November convention. Uh, We're going to be sharing a lot about age reversal and the future, and there's a lot of surprises uh, ahead. So uh, I look forward to seeing everyone there. Absolutely. Thank you, David, for that. Thank you for doing the webinar. Really appreciate you spending your time with us. Have a great day.